chaser. And Sarah Vaughn, who took the 1500 two weeks ago in Sacramento on the Sunset Tour. Colorado alum was a World Championships qualifier four years ago and made that U.S. team. Dana Mecki running for Tracksmith and Colorado Springs Elite Track Club will wear hip number three. You see Mecki often in the 800 meters moving up to the 15 here. The NCAA champion at 5,000 meters out of NC State where she ran 15-18, Ellie Hennis. Hennis will wear hip number four, now running for Adidas. Ayla Granados, the former Chico State All-American, will wear hip number five. She's run 412. She ran that 412 at the Trials of Miles Kansas City qualifier to take the win there, 412 flat. It's a fine run for Granados earlier this season. Jennifer Randall from Run Hub Northwest. Randall, former Division Three All-American at Ithaca College. Running for the Brooks Beast is Chris and Nelson, where it's hip number seven. Out of Washington, formerly of Wash uh, University of Washington, had a nice PR at 800 meters and ran 406 earlier this season as Eleanor Fulton, where it's hip number eight. The Canadian Sasha Golish, who's been running for Wazell. This is her third stop on the Sunset Tour at 39 years old. Ran 432 last week. Uh, had a tough race in Sacramento, but bounced back and ran well. And it looks like Golish may be a scratch. I did see Mel Lawrence warming up. I don't see her there on our start list. So Mel Lawrence from Wazell. Yeah, I see her hip number 13. She's right there actually in the middle of the screen. Mel Lawrence from Wazell, little, wi little wing. Ran a great steeple at the, at the Olympic trials, running 926 here in the 1500. Marissa Howard from Idaho afoot, wears hip number 14. And Tara Rawlings ran a great mile last week, 62.5 to hold off Rave, Raven Rogers in that mile, running 428. Tara Rawlings out of University of Portland running for Under Armour. And Karina Viljoen wears hip number 16. So large field here and an outstanding field with some 1500 meter specialists and then people like Ellie Hennis looking to probably close out the season and lock in a 1500 meter PR. You know how those distance runners are. They want PRs across the board, Tim. And she ran great in the 5000 this year and probably looking to knock down that 1500 just a little bit. You know, that's exactly it, exactly it. Here we are at the end of the year. You know, a collegian like that's had a great year, but you know, 15, 18 for 5000, she's won the West Coast Relays. Uh, she's been racing well every time she's raced, so we'll see if we can get a good pace tonight. Help her along. And Hennis coached by her mom in college, who was, who was a professional distance runner in the 90s. And her, she comes in with a lifetime best of 4.10.23. She ran in Raleigh this spring. She was first at the Sunset Tour meet in Sacramento just a couple of weeks ago. And 4.07.64. She has a PB of 4.04. Ellie Hennis wears hit number four, fresh off the NCAA Championship 5,000 I was really impressed with Taryn Rawlings last week. Our eyes were on Raven Rogers as she blasted through the field, but out front and unable to be caught was Rawlings. And I looked at the splits afterwards. I was really impressed with Raven Rogers, but her last lap, Rawlings' last lap was just as fast. Yeah, that was impressive to dip under 430 like that also, yeah. So our pacer has been asked to go at 403, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, these, these women are gonna have to be ready off the gun at that pace. Marissa Howard from Idaho of Foot and Karen Rollins from Under Armour and the Dark Sky Distance Crew. And then Karina Villion ran hit number 16. And All right, here we go through the first 100 meters. Again, just like we did with the men, though, not quite going with the pacer. Hopefully they'll make up that distance, and they are. They're trying to close that gap a little bit. Pacer has to stay on her job, and the group has to move up. You can see Sarah Vaughn there popping out. Now that pack is on the pacer. Vaughn moving up, and then right on her shoulder, Coogan moving up with her, and Rollins on the inside. So 48 
That's all right. That's all right. We'll see how they go through the first 400 here. And I didn't mention Coogan to start. The Georgetown alum running for Team New Balance Boston. And Coogan now into third. But look at Sarah Vaughn. All right, through the first 400, right at 64. That's right around what we were hoping. A little high 64, 2, 2, 64, 6 on that. Coogan right tucked in there. It's the longevity of Sarah Vaughn's career, in addition to having four children here out crushing another 1,500. <laughs> Vaughn looking very strong here. She's got a personal best of 404, so we are right around that pace. She's been there before. Now I'm watching Marissa Howard in third right now as she starts to move up. Marissa Howard looking very strong there on a mission. Eleanor Fulton in fourth. So some people looking to drop some big times here. That's right, Fulton moving up well also. Their pace has done a nice job. Everybody's in there, hopefully won't pack up right here and make a good third lap. Mel Lawrence is hanging on to the end of that. What a great year she's had. 926 on the steeple. Great race last week, just like we were talking about with Hennis. Get down here and let's see how fast we can run for 1600. Speaking of Hennis, right in the middle of that pack, running in, what, five, six, sixth right now. So she's right in it. That lap, though, 65, seven on that. We came by 800 meters at 210, 210. So we're right what we want to be. Said we're looking at a 403, 404. So, and it looks like we're picking it up even. All right, we got a race. Yeah, you know, Sarah Vaughn, known for her clothes over the years, is going to have to do it from the front here. That's what Rawlings did last week. Remember, she held it all the way and then held off all the challenges. So Vaughn and right there, Howard, and moving up well, Fulton. So right at three, right at three. So if we can get in the low 60s, we'll be right around four. And now we had 359 last week. Eleanor Fulton ran 4.06 this season, which was a nice breakthrough, and look at the move she's making in second. She is running very well, moving up there on the backstretch. Eleanor Fulton now in second. They've kind of separated a bit. Down the backstretch. Vaughn trying to lead, 200 meters to go. 200 meters to go, we're right around 333. And here comes Eleanor Fulton, look at this move. Over the last 200 meters, she progressed her way through and Carissa Nelson on the move as well and another fine close from Rawlings, look at this group. Fulton though, has not got it under the gun yet. Here they come on the outside, moving very well. Rawlings coming back just like she did last week in the orange on the outside, Rawlings. Oh my, four across. And Rawlings, Rawlings wins it again. Wow. 405 02. Nelson, 405 20. Vaughn, 405 23. Fulton, 405 33. Four women separated by three tenths of a second. Howard, 408 85. Ennis, 409 33. Coogan, 410 10. But Rawlings really is starting to make a name as a kicker. What a great finish. Yeah, back-to-back -back weeks for Rollins. And I mean, just the way that she closed, my eyes were not even on her at all. And because I, I looked at her with 400 to go and she was kind of fading back. And I was like, okay, she's out of the race. Well, I was completely wrong. What a close. You know, she really won it. No one let her have that. All four of them, you know, three tenths of a second, uh, any one of them could have been the winner of that race. So an, an excellent effort. People are really pushing the, pushing the envelope here.